Welcome. Today is August 19th. We love our cheap beer, but who knows? We make it come back. That's right. Our dads could buy cheap beer for $5, and we are not that fortunate. Cheap overpriced beer, college football, grocery shopping, and glamping got us to our top six crackers. And yes, we mean the food. Let's go. The Eagle has landed. Welcome home, beautiful. Medium, mashed potatoes, asparagus, mac and cheese, cold beer. Like four losses from it. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to let you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell your suck. Yeah. I'm but, gonna I'm gonna owe you a, a dinner here. No, I know it. I know it. I am well aware. And I totally just remembered I did not do my top six, so I'm going to do that during our show. Oh, good. Excellent. So I will be extra worse today than I am normally. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, we're back. Um, We both had very busy weekends. We did. What did you do? Well, I redid part of my driveway, put a little, like, crushed asphalt in there, and I... Power washed my decks and part of my house and my garage, which was miserable, and my sidewalk, mm-hmm. which is dumb, but it looks nice. Because, you know, when you power wash it and you hit the, the dirt and then mud oh, splashes yeah. up in your eyes and you can't see for the rest of the night. And, and you have to be so precise. Like, you could power wash, and if you don't do it right, you just have a bunch of clean lines and then yep. a bunch of dirty stuff. Yeah, it have, takes forever to yeah. do, like, a 16 yeah. by 16 square. It's miserable. But yeah, I got that all done, and I ripped carpet out of a basement and did some yard work at the uh, house my property manager for. Uh, my brother fun. was in town, so I had supper. I had, I guess, we had lunch with him and his wife and my family. And yeah, what else did I do? A lot. No, it was just a busy, crazy weekend. I was sore last night when I went to bed. Mowed lawn. Yeah. You went camping, though. Yeah, I did. We went um, just really local here. We didn't go far. It was less than 20 minutes. I actually Merle. forgot some growlers at home, and Lucas woke up about 6 o'clock Saturday morning. It's like, Mel fed him, and I'm like, I don't want to wake up Jameson. What should I do with him? I'm going to go home real fast. Ran home. Got some Tim Hortons. You know, some glamping activities there. <laughs> <laughs> some Oreo ice caps. Dude. Oreo ice caps with Tim Hortons are the way to go. I've never been a cold coffee person my entire life. It's black coffee, steaming hot. It could be 100 degrees. It's the only way I'm going to drink my coffee. But I love Oreos. Oreo ice caps at Tim Hortons are the greatest thing ever invented. I've sort of found out in life that anything that gives you diabetes is delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I walked in from the camper and uh, a 20-pack of... Um, what are they called? The donut holes, what are they called? Timbits. Timbits. There you go. I had a mind fart. Yeah, Timbits and uh, two uh, Oreo ice caps, which was awesome. But no, it was good. It was. If uh, it's not type two, you ain't trying. <laughs> exactly. If there's two types, go for type two, right? <laughs> At least so I'm told. I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, we went there. It was fun. Did a little fishing and realized after we were fishing and didn't catch anything that the pond was full of turtles only and no fish. So. <laughs> Like, we all, like, threw our worms out there and everything. We're like, oh, yeah, look, we're getting, we're, like, trying to yank something in. Like, man, it's not not biting. It's just nibbling at it. But it always took our worm. Like, so I, we went through an entire pack of worms. Like, we're, my wife's on a hayride with Jameson later. She was like, oh, yeah, I was talking to someone about the fishing pond. I'm like, oh, what'd they say? Yeah, don't fish there. <laughs> fish in the other fishing pond. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so the one across from our campsite, don't go fish. Go walk across the campground. But it was fun. They had, uh, the water was nice. They had a little pond there and everything. And. Did a little boat racing and tried out my new uh, Coleman grill, which was awesome. Is it a uh, propane? It is a propane grill. Is it one of those like red ones, a little tiny tank that like stands up and then yeah. it pulls up? And yeah, th- that's exactly what it is. But uh, I bought the hose to because uh, I have a quick release to my propane for my camper on the outside. Yeah, gotcha. and then I've got a Y connector so I can do my stove and my my grill at the same time. Because why not? Because you're glamping, baby. Glamping <laughs> life. Now that you got the fancy. Trailer camper. Yeah, right, right. 24 feet of awesomeness, let me tell you what. <laughs> Pop-outs. Well, that's cool. That well, sounds like a good yeah. time. Yeah, it was good. I, I came mean, across a five-person tent that I... 
You should come camping. Dude. Yeah, I'm not going to take my one-year-old in a tent. Why? Because a lot of people do. And I, I don't want to. Oh, when are you going to come camping next year? Well, once I get a trailer, but first I need a vehicle to pull the camper. Dude, tent camping, man. I hate tent camping. I had a pop-up for sale you could have bought. Yeah, I don't have anything to pull the pop-up, though. So you could have just pulled it with your little Ford. It only weighed 1,000 pounds. But I don't have a hitch. You could pull it on. Yeah, I'm not going to. You're gonna just full of excuses. Well, so the thing is, Shana's next vehicle is going to be something bigger, and I'm going to make sure it has a tow package on Good. it. Buy a camper. Yeah, yeah, we probably will. But um, I'm right now I'm more worried about buying a house, so there's that. <laughs> just that big old expense <laughs> out there. <laughs> I mean, next to a house, a camper's kind of nothing, so. Right. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, so, wins and fails, man. Let's get this started. I asked Melanie today what my wins and fails were, and her response was, you had no fails. You're a great dad. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's What awesome. a liar. I know, right? That's why I'm like, really? Nothing? Like, So I'm still trying to think of my fail. Um, I don't know. What just beeped? Something beeped. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to skip my fail for now so I can ponder it for a little bit longer, but I will give you my win. Um, and my win was... Both our kids slept for probably nine straight hours through the night camping. Outstanding. Which is good. So it was just we stayed up till 1230 drinking. So it was our own fault that we only got <laughs> five hours of sleep. But they slept, which was good because after going up north to the cottage and everything and Lucas waking up so much, we're like, oh, great. And then with Jameson right in the same camper, it was going to be hard to... Get them both to sleep, but they both went to bed usually between eight thirty and nine, and didn't wake up till six six thirty. So it was Good that, that's you. our win. I um, let's see. My fail is, to my knowledge, Olivia is still not sleeping tonight. I was trying to put her down Ooh. in bed before I left today to head over here, and in her room we have a like a glider and we rock her in because she. Won't put herself to sleep yet. Drives me nuts. So anyway, I was rocking her, and she just was looking up at me and pulling on my beard and trying to open up the curtains and laughing and chewing on her little teddy bear and trying to climb around like a chimpanzee on my shoulders. And So I said, screw this. I give up. So I took her out in the living room, and she played with her toys a little bit longer, and Shana said, all right, we're going to go to bed, and Shana gave it a try, and... She did the same thing to Shayna, and then Shayna gave up and just threw her in her crib. And when I left, she was just crying in her crib, and Shayna was just watching TV. She's been asleep for 40 minutes. So I started. So How do you know this? Because she just commented. See, no. this is the weird thing. So I, I started this watch party. I can't. I, I know. I started a watch party on my Facebook page, and everyone's watching and commenting on that. I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at my computer. I just did this to invite people to watch, but apparently. I'm going to keep it open because it's getting our watches up. Okay. Watches is numbers, and numbers mean maybe money. Watches have numbers. Watches do. They Except for the ones with little lines, and some lines are bigger than the other lines, and it takes Dude, forever to count how many no, lines are over no, there. Then you got to measure the line and see what one's what. No. Yeah, it's like a sundial. I don't like sundials because no, no, no. what if you don't have a sun? Exactly. Well, yeah, you know? what do you do when it's cloudy? Never, never know what time it rainy. is on an overcast day. You don't do anything. I don't know. So yeah, that was a uh, was a good job, Shane. You finally got her awesome. to go to sleep. But my win, my very spectacular, wonderful win is, I guess I made supper tonight that she liked. So nice. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was so busy all week, and I did not get a whole lot of time to hang out with Olivia. But she did go to the Detroit Zoo today with Shana. Oh, fun! Yeah, I That's worked. Fun. Nice worked. What does Matt do at work? Nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I... dad do drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> what? I cannot think of a fail. I'm just and so good. I, I never do anything wrong. And I don't know. He's going on the potty sometimes. Sometimes he's peeing in his underwear. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean... <laughs> That's Matt's normal Friday at the bar. It's it's strange morning when I wake up and my pants are still dry. And I didn't pee myself throughout the night. We did all right. <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. I don't pee my pants anymore very often. Oh, man. 
I really don't know what's going on. I got to close this watch party. People can go find it somewhere else. Why'd you close it? Because people are like commenting on there, but it's not showing up. And then they say they're commenting on the video. Well, they're not here either. I don't know what anyone's doing. You know what? This is thank you for anybody that's involved. We appreciate y'all. We do. Also, if you're not involved, you're not going to know. So screw you. <laughs> <laughs> fail. What was a fail? Uh, my son actually started a fire, so that was a win because it was in the fire pit. It was just really hot coals. It's also was... kind of a fail <laughs> that uh, you taught your son how to start a fire. No, he made, like the the coals were still so hot from the night before. He like walked up and just started throwing wood in it. And it just started on fire again. <laughs> like, oh, all right, cool. Only you can prevent forest fires, Adam. It sounds like you did not do a very good job in putting the fire out. Hey, hey. We're Smokey good. the Bear would be very upset with you. No, Smokey the Bear would be happy with me because I did not burn down the campground. I put he it out have. before it got that far. Well, it sounds like that he could have. Fa- oh, here's a good fail. I don't know if it's a fail. So my son, oldest Jameson, will sleep in the push out thing the bed and it's got zipper windows mm-hmm. and he always opens the windows and goes hi dad when mm-hmm. he's supposed to be sleeping mm-hmm. so uh, it might be a win i locked him i bought luggage locks and locked him <laughs> he can't get out now well he can't see out oh another win shana just reminded me olivia says daddy now money but it's kind of like daddy. hey it's, dude. <laughs> but i'm gonna say that it's daddy bro it's gotta start somewhere that's good that's good Sometimes she says good, and sometimes she gives a high five. Nice. But it's like a, like it's not just one high five. It's oh, just just wait. Jameson will go high five too slow. <laughs> he skips some steps. <laughs> <laughs> high five too slow. Bro, you were like laughing and getting away from the microphone, and I was just like, "Oh, this is a perfect time." To I do wasn't awesome paying transition. attention to the. And then you started the talking schedule again. here, and I had new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> just play the beer of the podcast sound effect, and Matt's response is, "I have new shoes." I uh, I realized I forgot to take my shoes off and I walked in the house this week, <laughs> and uh, that's dude. That's the thing with new shoes, though. You never want to take them off. They're really comfy. So the first day I wore my feet hurt because they weren't used to support. Mm-hmm. They're wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, All right. And Olivia blows kisses, but it's more like she puts her hand over her face and licks her palm. Money. That's, yeah. <laughs> they got to start somewhere, man. So the meaning of this show. Or this we episode, don't know what the meaning of the show. We don't know. There's no meaning to the show. That's why we don't know anything. Uh, five dollar twenty four pack. So back in the day, and by the day I mean like, I don't know, the seventies, the eighties. I don't even know if it was. Yeah, it's probably the eighties. You could buy a twenty four pack of stubby bottles of Altus for five bucks. Uh huh. So they just stopped making it, and like every other Detroit craft brewery thing that's being renewed like the Stroh's Bohemia was, they are now making Altus again. Uh-huh. And they're doing it at uh, Brew Detroit, and it's awesome. Because uh-huh. it's Altus. Well, guess what, Matthew? What? Yeah. One, it does not come in stubby bottles. I see that. I get, uh, I can tell this by the can. By the can you're holding. Two, you ready for number two? It does not cost $5 for 24 beers. No, it costs like ten dollars for six, doesn't it? Yeah, it's inflation. I mean, uh, today's <laughs> that's a ridiculous amount of inflation. So we're looking at uh, here. Just gonna do some. Just it's like do thirty some years. Here. You're looking at. Uh, oh, I did that math wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, twenty-one cents a bottle back in the day. And now you're looking at dollar uh, sixty seven. Jesus. Well, everybody knows that yesterday's twenty one cents is today's dollar sixty seven. So no, no. Just ask me. It might be true. I just did the I don't know. Well, according to Altus is. But anyways, it's an overpriced, used to be cheap beer. So I bought some because <laughs> I've been really my, like my dad, my lovely father Joe, would give me. An empty case. These were wax cases. Oh, wax they were nice. Cases. They were some 
durable cases. And every time we'd go camping, here's your case. Fill it up with all the toys you want. This is all you get to take. <laughs> but you can fit a lot of Hot Wheels cars in one of those cases, man. Like, you had a couple hundred. So and I had a couple hundred. So we'd fill it up, and that's like my memory of Altus was that. My memory of Altus is my dad giving me an empty box, is what you're saying. Exactly. But it was the best box. Those boxes are fantastic. So growing up on the farm, we had a handful like that. And I think we had a black label box. We'd throw stuff in once in a while. Same type of thing. I mean, this is, these boxes don't, there's no such thing anymore. So they didn't break from the condensation because of the no, wax coating on it. Exactly. But the boxes were very expensive. But a lot of times they would reuse those boxes multiple times. Now with the whole, like, you know, economy sucking and everything, they don't do that. So Altus. Yeah. It's a Vienna lager. I really don't know much about this beer. I just know it's not that good. For ten bucks, this beer should be a lot better. If it was a five, if I spent like even if I spent five bucks on this six pack, I'd be like, oh, I get it. But I spent ten bucks on this six pack, so I'm like, no, I don't get. It. So it's gonna be like all those other old old school beers coming back, overpriced. They're gonna have this exactly what I did. I'm gonna go buy it because I want to try it because I have a memory of it, not drinking it, but. It resonates with me, and then I'm never gonna buy it again. Yep, and they're gonna make they're gonna do this, make it once or twice, and and it's gonna lose its, you know, feng shui. Is that exactly. right? No, that's not the, the thing. Right is word. now like it's only really available in Metro Detroit, so it's slowly creeping upward into like the Saginaw area and everything. But I guess once it gets there, it might hold on a little longer. But for now, no. So I like Vienna lagers just. That style itself. I'm okay. a huge fan. Um, I, I love German beers. So drinking this, I can, right up front, I can taste the what they're trying to do with the Vienna Lager, but it finishes like, um, uh, um, not quite soap, but uh, <laughs> pretty awful. Right there. Like it should be a $5 case of beer. Yeah. Honestly, I don't mind this at all. So in college, I used to drink Stroh's and... Not that far off from Stroh's, in all honesty. Actually, a little bit more full flavor than the Stroh's. But I'm okay with this. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I can drink 30 of those. Yeah. Not right now. No, Maybe 32? No. In 1910, the Detroit Free Press published an ad that a case of 24 beers sold at $1.25. Man. I could buy so much beer. Right? Huh. A dollar twenty five. But you gotta think beers. I mean, these people are making like good job in nineteen ten, twenty bucks a week. I wonder if there's gotta be a calculator out here. Nineteen So you're looking at to right around a tenth of their weekly salaries going to beer at that point. Oh perfect. Nineteen ten dollars. That's one thousand nine hundred and ten dollars. So Actually, I don't know what side. I'm going to say this, and then we can kind of decide what the rate of what's better. So, in a, <laughs> a dollar in 1910 is the equivalent to $27 in 2019. So, huh. it's still cheaper than it was technically in ratio equivalencies of inflation. Ratio equivalency. I don't know. I'm just trying to sound smart. <laughs> Put a whole bunch of math words next to each other. Yeah. So let's do nineteen seventy dollars. So, uh, I mean, okay, that's way weird. too far. So, anyways, whatever. That's not in the heyday. In the heyday, when it was five bucks, a dollar was a dollar. Nineteen seventy, it would be six sixty one today in twenty nineteen. So. If you spent $5 in 1970, I opened my calendar to do math. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am hosting this show with an absolutely illiterate person when it comes to math equations. Um, a case of beer would be 3305 A 24 bottles. That's honestly so, pretty spot on with beer. Craft beer. Yeah. To Yeah, but... We're talking about think cheap think beer. about it think about it this way though this wasn't cheap beer how was it cheap it was five bucks yeah in 1970 
much was a case of Budweiser in 1970? I'm about to find out. Or a case of Blatt's. Yeah, Blatt's would be a good comparison, but we're not going to be able to find Blatt's. Well, see, I'm thinking this was... Oh, here we go. Uh, more price of a of premium beer. beer. Okay, I don't get this. Price of beer, 1970, 86 cents. 86 cents for how much beer, though? Probably a bottle. Or a six-pack. No, probably a bottle. It's less than that now. It's 50 cents. It's a lot easier to make the product now. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. Innovation. I did not Regulation. do Regulation. Research. Compensation. For this to just come Constipation. Up here. So price, so as I say... Price of beer now is they're say price of beer is three ninety nine, so it's probably like a pint. All right, four bucks. All right, so pint back then was what I say eighty six cents or whatever. Eighty six cents. Okay. I don't know where I was. Going with I this have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Altus. All right. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> so I learned something. Maybe I told you this before. So every time that I cheers. I got in a habit in college. I'd cheers, and I'd hit my drink in the, on the table or whatever mm-hmm. in the bar. Do you know why that came to be? I looked it up one time because I was like, why do I do that? Cheers and hit the table. I don't know. So it was thought because hard alcohol is often called spirits. Right. And the thought was there's, because alcohol gets you all messed up, and the thought was that there was evil spirits in the spirits. And so when you knock it on the table, you knock the spirits out of there so you can consume it without being possessed. Something like that, I don't know. So it's good luck to knock your drink on the table before you do it. Good luck. Drink. Don't spill any. Something that like that? Sure. <laughs> so oh. cheap beers. I mean, that's that's kind of what we were talking about there. And I know that my cheap beers I went to in college because I didn't have very much money it was either Stroh's or... If I had some extra money, the most alcohol per <laughs> can I could get at the highest quantity of cans was Milwaukee's Best Ice. 40s. You see, I would do 40s, I used to but drink, oh, King oh, Cobra. Bro, no, bro. 40s of Night Flight. They probably don't even make it anymore. I haven't seen one of those. was a forever. buck 50. Get yeah. it at twelve and chain or Metro Detroit. Forties had some of good times on some night flight, baby. Uh I've been getting a steel reserve once in a while. I'll tell OE. you some stories off air about night flight. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> if I was buying beer for a party, it was either Stroh's or Milwaukee's best ice. One because it was the alcohol content. And two, because nobody else drank that crap, and I knew if anybody was drinking it, they stole my beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good idea. Because you know in college, every dude, like, you always brought Bush Light to the party? Bush Light or PBR or yeah, something, yeah. exactly. Some dude would bring nothing, but like, oh, I brought Bush Light, and just grab random people. Yep, Bush and it lights. would be, and come hunting season, I grabbed the 30 packs of Bush Heavy, because it had the camouflage cans. Right. I love those cans. Yep. I still love those cans. I do, too. So it was either Bush Heavy, Stroh's. Or beast eyes, and nobody touched my beer. And if they did, I kicked their ass for drinking my beer. I was bush heavy, and then speaking of old beers that came back out, hams. True, yes, hams came out, and they have held on to the market now because of it. But they are still like twelve ninety nine thirty packs, mm-hmm. which I'm sure back in the day they weren't. They were a lot cheaper, but they're still the cheapest one on the shelf. So I, I drank a lot of hams when I was broke. I forgot I, about that. Yep. So we were, I worked for a Bud distributor, right? Hams is a Miller product. So I went into my interview, and they were like, oh, um, we talking or whatever. Like, what's your go-to beer right now? And I'm like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm broke. Hams <laughs> is the cheapest beer on that shelf, and I buy hams. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Got the job. <laughs> Haven't drank ham since. <laughs> I once said a small get together at my house where back in college where I bought some beer and we had three different 30 pack or three different beers available so we got uh um hams is one of them um another beer I'd never even heard of before it was like Meyer brand off brand weird goofy ass beer I have no idea what it was oh it, um a Rite Aid or something like that beer 30 
it was it was along those lines, but yeah. it wasn't beer thirty and it wasn't tailgate time, and I don't remember what it was. And the third one was uh, Red Dog. Oh, Red Dog! Oh, <laughs> that, that was, was nasty. terrible. Oh. Needless to say, we had plenty of beer left over because nobody wanted it. Oh, that <laughs> I was said, bad. I'll buy you guys some beer, and uh, yeah, nobody wanted it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no Red Dog, dude. Oh, another beer I used to drink a lot of because it was really cheap. Rolling Rock. I honestly, I don't think I've ever had a Rolling Rock. I honestly, I like Rolling Rock. Your dog is uh, hacking up a lung yeah. in the room. What you do to her? I don't know. I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be right back. And I'm back. So, yeah, sorry about that weird transition there. We had to make sure Lucy wasn't yeah. choking on something. Priorities, there. man. So, one year, uh, my roommate and I, we had a nice mantle in our living room and it was around Christmas time and we drank a whole bunch of rolling rock and built a Christmas tree. We inserted a Budweiser can every once in a while so it was green and red. That is really cool. Yeah. Well, um one of our other roommates was uh short on rent that month and we woke up to our Christmas tree being torn down because he <laughs> didn't take the cans back. <laughs> it's like It was like right at the end of the month and he needed it for January. I was like, yeah, Adam, come on man, he couldn't wait an extra few days. <laughs> That's hilarious. So yeah, that was that was my <laughs> crowning achievement when it came to Rolling Rock. That's funny. Too funny. Too funny. All right. Did you know? Fifty years ago, this past weekend was Woodstock. Yeah, it was there. In a different life. Oh, okay. I'm a hippie. 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 <laughs> anyway, I saw it was really cool. I think the whole festival and the idea of it's really cool that. It was in a farmland in the middle of nowhere, and 500,000 people showed up, and they sold acid for a dollar. Yeah, so what's crazy about this is every rendition of Woodstock since then has been an absolute failure, yet it's still known for being the greatest music festival of all oh, time. Oh, yeah. See, look at the original Wood- Woodstock, and there was no water, and the weather was terrible, and these great bands went and performed, especially in their early days of their careers. And it was just in some dude's farm field in upstate New York, and uh, it was it was a mess, and it was a nightmare, and it was disgusting, and people died, and people got pregnant, oh, and people got no. STDs. Hold on, hold on. Guess how many people died? One, two, two. Dang it! I knew it was very low. Yeah, guy got ran over by a tractor because he was sleeping under it, and the guy didn't, the farmer didn't realize, and one person OD'd. Yep, that was it. I knew it was and, really low. And they think there was a baby born. At Woodstock. I did hear that. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, Woodstock was a crazy drunken drug fest of a debacle, but still known for being the greatest festival of all time. And then it came back. Was it twenty five year anniversary? They did it again, and again there was no water, and it was just a mess, and mm. it was disgusting and horrible. Well, this year was the fifty year anniversary. They're trying to do it again, and everybody, <laughs> everybody got booked, got paid, and then they couldn't find a venue, and everybody canceled. They did do something small at the farm. Like 10,000 people showed up. It was like really small. Yeah, 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 but I think it's never in the history of booking a show should you pay <laughs> pay your acts. Oh no. First. <laughs> Just Not the, at all. The dumbest thing ever. I mean, granted, yeah, it might entice them, quote unquote, to mm-hmm. come, but unless you have a foolproof legal team or uh, foolproof uh contract with a crackpot legal team you're screwed yeah and that's kind of what happened so they exactly. they're out all this money and nobody showed up and there's a couldn't find a venue and there's a uh, documentary on pbs i want to watch about it but what is there's a bunch of festivals out there so now do you what's the one that you think is most like woodstock the most like woodstock because woodstock woodstock in this in the seven in 69 because woodstock in 99 was a shit show at the end of the day like that was people dying mosh pits not a good idea. Woodstock in 69 was a peace, love, and drug celebration. Most like Woodstock would probably be... Oh, there's one here in Michigan. Electric the, uh, Forest. Electric Forest. That's, that's yeah. what I was thinking. That's yeah, I mean, completely like... different style of music, but oh, everybody yeah. just goes there and, like, henna tattoos. Exactly. And let's see how much acid we can drop. Exactly. And we're going to watch this band exactly. play this thumping electric music. Yeah, they play electric and... I don't even EDM know and the house yeah. trap and all that yeah. stuff I don't listen to. No. That's like a crowd that I don't... No. I do want to go, but I, I don't. It looks go. like it's pretty cool show they there's put on like, there. You can get like a campsite there, too. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the... 
hey, let's have sex and do drugs part. Then there's the, hey, I'm here to listen to music, then go be responsible because I'm 35 years I'm old. I need to do that. <laughs> right? like, I have to go to work on Monday. <laughs> like, there's a, like, uh, <laughs> up north in the uh, Ludington area or something like that, there's a bluegrass festival every year, too. I think it'd be really cool. They just started camping sweet. in the woods all weekend. Just listen to a whole bunch of bluegrass and party. It'd be a good time. So I have been to Warp Tour a couple times, which is nothing like Woodstock because no. people are just insane. I uh, watched Bones Break. Jesus. It's crazy. Yeah. So that is probably the most known music festival that's happening right now, I would argue, mm-hmm. nationwide. But Coachella. uh what's that? Coachella. Oh, Coachella. L- yeah. Lollapalooza. Yeah. I mean it's they're but all they have their own niche. Warp Tour is kind of dying now that I think yeah. about it. Cuz like that whole style of music is the whole punk scene has sort of fallen off a little bit. Mm. Whereas the the Coachella type scene yeah. or the Lollapalooza is a little more on the up and up. Yeah. But still, I mean they're they're wicked. They're wild. It's a good time. But I've never done one for a full weekend. Nearby. I do want to go to Faster Horses sometime. That would be fun. I'm a yeah, big country yeah. music fan. That'd be that'd yeah. be a good time. I know a lot of people. I know a guy. He used to go to high school with him. He bought a school bus and he gutted out the entire school bus and turned the turned into just a giant camper, basically with a whole bunch mm. of cots and bunk That's beds sweet. and stuff. And uh, when they park out there, they pull a trailer too. So you have their school bus thing that they sleep in. And they've got a trailer that's a bar, and they've got they buy two campsites. They've got two humongous big top tents with a giant dance floor underneath. That's awesome. It's wicked. That's sweet. Yeah, let's do it. It's yeah. I'll show you off here. This okay. bus is pretty sweet. Sounds good. All right, grocery shopping. So yeah, I want to I want to bring this up because uh, no matter if I'm going shopping by myself or Shana's going by herself or we're together or one of us has Olivia and the other one's home, however it works out, it's always a fiasco. So this past weekend, I was helping a friend of mine with some stuff, and Shana was going to go grocery shopping, so I took Shana's car because she wanted to take my car shopping. I don't remember why, but whatever I did. So she uh, left her purse in her car, and I had it with me, and she couldn't go shopping, so I had to go take the purse to her so she could go shopping. Everything's just a fiasco. Then you go shopping. Our local Meyer over here is going through a remodel. It's mm-hmm. just a freaking nightmare. I don't know where anything is. There's stuff not on the shelves. The milk and the cheese and the butter are in three different locations. <laughs> so I hate grocery shopping. Unless Shana and I are going together with the kid. Because I can just push Olivia around in the cart and keep her happy the whole time. And Shana just throw crap in the cart. But any other combination of shopping, I can't do it. If I go by myself, I just get pissed off at people. See, I go to myself, I just like zoom through and get done. But I don't really shop at Meyer that often. I'm an Aldi shopper. And Jack. Yeah, I never got into Aldi. So Jack's, we'll buy like our lunch meats and stuff there yeah. and chicken. But I mean, it's I'm a, I'm a Meyer fan. They got everything I would need. So you can go to Meyer now. And on their Meyer app, you can shop through the app and scan stuff as you go. So, like, you can put in your scan, put in your bag, scan, put in your bag, scan, put in your bag. Go up, scan the register. The person comes up, checks it. Yep, you're good. Pay, done. Huh. So you don't have to go in and then scan everything at the aisle and then walk out. You literally take your phone, scan the QR code, and everything uploads, and you're done. Really? Yeah, we did that today. We had to go there real fast for, like, four items. It really wasn't worth it then because there's still someone saw us come over and check. But like if you go for like a huge grocery trip and they're like, oh hey here, boop, done. Do they have the uh, thing where you can order online? Yeah, shipped. No, I mean like you can go pick it up at the oh, store. Yeah. So what I don't like about that, I think it's a really good idea. But I don't like about that is I don't trust the whole produce thing. No. I, mean, I like to check my own that's, watermelons. Yeah, that's me for too. For firmness and sweetness. You want to you check a watermelon? Nope. I just grab one. So what you want to do first is pick it up, and if you notice a lot of Here's, brown spots... Hey, let's make this Dad's Life advice. Okay. This would be a good one for Dad's Life advice. Screw glamping. Go glamping. That's my life advice. Watermelon. <laughs> Go for it. So when you're at the store and you're looking at the old like, box of watermelon there, because mm-hmm. that's how they... They just bring it out on a pallet and drop it. That's how they grow in the wild is in boxes. 
<laughs> and uh, so you pick up the watermelon. You want to look for the brown spots around the outside because that mm-hmm. means that the sugar has completely come out to the, the rind. Okay. So it's going to be sweet all the way through. Next thing you want to do is you want to knock on a little bit. If it a little knocky knocky. That's a bad knocky knocky. There you go. So you want to knock on a little bit, and you want to hear a little bit of hollowness. If it's if you can't hear the hollowness, that means it's it's uh, not quite ripe enough because it's still really firm. You want your okay. watermelon to have a little bit of mushiness and that granulation in there. That's the sugars that are in there. That's gonna be nice sweet watermelon for you. So you look for the yellowness and the brown on the outside and a little bit of hollow sound when you knock it. And the easy thing to check is right where the stem goes into the watermelon. Mm. If that's not dry, it's not even close. So don't, even, don't even waste your time. So seedless to non-seedless or seedless to seeded, does this work on both? Yes. Okay. But I 99% of the time will buy seedless watermelon because I just go to town on this stuff. I don't have to worry oh, yeah. about Biting a that, seed or swallowing one in a watermelon plant growing in my stomach, you know. Jameson had to take snacks this morning. That's what we made to, well, made last night. We cut up last night was watermelon, but then we got a little dino cut out, so we made dinosaur watermelon. Oh. And he was just, like, loving it. What? Yeah. Then he ate them all. No dino. Dinosaur yeah. watermelon? Yeah, dude. These, these are the fun things you get to do when your kids get older. It's like dinosaur watermelon. Oh, and just man. see, like, the joy at his face. Oh! <gasps> Dino watermelon. Like he already loves watermelon. And it looks like a dinosaur. Oh gosh. T Rex. <laughs> All right. Top six crackers. Number six. My first. I'm gonna go first. Okay, you go first. Number six. Saltines, because they are. Not necessarily good in their own, but they're great in every kind of soup or chili or stew I've ever had. Crush them up, throw them in there. I'm not a huge salt. You know what's good on saltines, though, is jelly. You take, like, some raspberry jelly and some butter, load it with a nice little thick layer, about a quarter inch of butter, and then a little raspberry jam, and then bite it. Real (gasps) butter? Like butter butter, not peanut butter? Oh, real butter. What the oh. hell? <laughs> you, you like clog those arteries, baby. So hold on. Let me get this straight. Take a saltine cracker. Put some butter on it. And just smear some butter on it and some yep. raspberry jelly. Yep. And then take a bite. Best thing you'll ever take. Ever, ever um, no, but what I will put in a saltine is uh, a little spritz of uh, yellow mustard and mm. pickle bologna. You're weird. Oh, that's weird? <laughs> That's I'm, weird. I'm loading up my salty with butter and raspberry jam. Butter and jam. raspberry jam over here, but pickle bologna and mustard's weird? Get the hell out of here. So my number six, I had a few on. Uh, I told Melanie one because I always text her my list so I don't forget about it, as I did today. Uh, I'm going to go with the oyster cracker. I, I like Just soup. missed my list. Yeah, I like the soups, and the thing that put it over the edge of got it on that list is when you go wine and beer tasting, what is the cracker they give you? They give you the oyster cracker because it cleanses your palate the best. Okay? Now, let me continue. What happens when you drink a lot of booze? You get hungry. What's True. available? Oyster More crackers. Booze. Oyster crackers. So, all of a sudden, these oyster crackers that were like, oh, yeah, whatever, you're just mowing handfuls down because you're 12 samples in and you're just like, woo! Oyster crackers. So, here's why oyster crackers didn't make my list because... You know, you can put oyster crackers in soup and stuff, and they're fine, and they're delicious, but the cracker itself needs to have the inside of it touch the liquid in order to be engorged with said liquid. An oyster cracker is just a little piece of crust, essentially. It's just all a hard part mm-hmm. on the outside. And you just you bite it, you, you pick it up in your spoon, you bite it, and it's just soup and hard cracker. There's no, like, mushiness. I'm going to put a cracker in soup. I want a little bit of mushiness. It just no. takes a long time. No. You know? Cracker has to be I'm a fan of stew over soup because I don't like the broth as much. I like the taste of everything. I don't like the liquid. Mm. Mainly because like, I hold it and it just, I don't know, I shake sometimes and the broth just goes all over the place and just make a mess. Don't fill up your bowl as much. But then you have to get up for seconds right away. Get bigger bowls. Use like one of the like bowl. the metal bowls that are like two gallons and just 
Take, bring the pot over. <laughs> bring the bring the big old pot. I don't put crackers in it for everybody in the pot because <laughs> exactly. it's gonna ruin it. Number five, Triscuits, and the reason they're not higher on my Ooh, list. Oh, that's a good one. Is because sometimes they hurt my mouth, but they're really tasty. And now there's a whole bunch of different varieties of them. I really like the cracked pepper and rosemary or the sea salt. That's a good one. I like the sea salt. Yeah, Triscuits are good. I'm a, I'm a big Triscuit fan. My list is changing because I did not really think this through. It's okay. <laughs> um, number five for me, I'm going to go, not going to go Triscuit. You know what? I think I got to go Triscuit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the one they like because you can get them and you can eat them on their own. I've eat like, you can get like little cheese. Or cream cheese, like what are they like cowbella ones, and you, you split yep. it up on there and yep. eat those on the go. Yep. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. throw a little cheese, a little sausage on there. Yeah, Triscuit. I'll, I'll go that. I'll go Triscuit number number five as well with you. Okay, that just got lame. Yep. Number four, Ritz, the original Ritz cracker, almost made my list. So I mean, it's. You can use it and make your own like little lunchable with it, or mm-hmm. you can dip it in spreads and cheeses. It's just a very versatile cracker, and you can't go wrong, really. I mean, it's not good for putting in soup because it's just a butter cracker. Oh, no. I put them in potato soup. Ooh, potato soup would be good. Yeah. Okay. I might have to give that a try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Ritz. Just because it's a little thicker. It can, they, they hold up. Ritz cracker. You yeah. know? I, I do that. That's a good one. That almost made my list... I, they just remind me because that's like the first thing I always eat when I'm sick. So it kind of reminds me of not feeling good. But Oh, my turn. All right. I no. eat dry toast. I, you know, you eat milk toast. Not no. when I'm sick. <laughs> Only when I'm working hard out in the field in <laughs> August. It's 976 <laughs> degrees outside. Here's some you milk really toast. want a water and a steak and you get milk toast. I just wanted water. I didn't even want the steak. I just wanted water. Just hydrate me. Oh, here's some milk. Oh, to make it better, we're going to pour it over some burnt bread. Uh, number four for me. Uh, you got me all all confused. Discombobulated. I don't want... Yep. I'm going to go. Oh, what do I go? Uh, cinnamon graham crackers. I introduced these two because I didn't know you how did. you did not know these did not exist. Yep. But they're very good. They can be eaten plain, which now that I have kids, I eat a lot of crackers, so I can eat them plain. But they also make very good s'more graham crackers as well. A little cinnamon, chocolate, and a little melty mallow. What else is good for s'mores is fudge stripes. I, uh, all well, you need is, is all you need a marshmallow. Exactly. Number three. Club crackers. Keebler. Club oh, crackers. yeah, those are thin oh. ones, thin long ones. I need to do more research when I do these. Yeah, this is no different than your cheese escapades. No, 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 no. no. American shredded. No, this is a lot cream. better than the cheese escapades, my friend. <laughs> um, club crackers are fantastic, and they're much like Ritz crackers. They're very good with everything. You can mm. cheese them. You can put. All sorts I don't of think they're as good them. though with meat. Like you can't take. A summer sausage and put it with. No, the summer sausage has got to go with the Ritz cracker. Ritz or wheat, then. Yeah. Yep. So I think I think the uh, the club cracker is a little bit sweeter. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think so. What number are we on? Three. I don't know. Uh, my number three, good old fashioned Cheez Its. I love me some Cheez Its. Do not give me reduced fat Cheez Its. Do not give me off brand Cheez Its. What about the white cheddar Cheez Its? White, they are very good. That was on my list, but I'm like, well, I don't want to do two Cheez Its. What about the uh, is it the jalapeno Cheez It? Never had them. What about the uh, no, Bro? The, the extra cooked Cheez Its, the, the burnt ones? You just asked me, I had two flavors of Cheez Its. Do you really think I've had more than two? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just had the white cheddar ones this year, so <laughs> branching out at 31. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Number two. Trisket. Not Trisket. Wheat Thin. <laughs> wheat Thin. I'm um, a huge Wheat Thin fan because Wheat Thins, like Triscuits, come with a lot of different flavors, but they don't hurt my mouth. And you can use them for all sorts Another of Another versatile cracker. Yep. Yep. 
but not a good soup cracker because they're too no, thin. No, 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 no. No, that's an appetizer cracker that you you put meat and cheese mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Or shizzle. Or shizzle. Um, number two, something that are always in our house and I love, goldfish. Yeah, they're good. I'd, that's kind of just like a different shape cheese it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's 100% the same thing. It is not. It tastes completely different. No. Yes. No, you're crazy. No, we got to taste test this. Oh, my God. I don't have any cheeses in the house right now. I do have a lot of goldfish, though. So that's number two. I keep my two and one stocked. Once you get to three, it's iffy. <laughs> number one. I'm going to guess you've never had this cracker before. Bring it on. Chicken and biscuit. I have not. <laughs> they are. What a chicken and what? <laughs> Look at you're up. Ma- I'm looking it up. You're making. So a chicken and biscuit cracker. They're like these. I don't even know what shape they're. They're like wavy edged crackers. And okay. they've got like chicken salt on them or something. I don't really know. Oh. oh they're nice. delicious. They look very good. They, I cheese don't, whiz? Oh, man. They are the least healthy cracker of all the crackers. But they are so, so good. You don't even need to put anything on them. You just eat them like chips. They're so delicious. You know what's really addicting is the sour cream and onion rich chips. Yep. So it's a rich cracker. <laughs> yeah, those are yep. those get me every time. But that's not on my list. Just uh, chips in general really do it. I too. feel like I may have had these back. Oh, in the they're day. so good. They look like I've had them, and I look like I've really enjoyed them. Shana likes them a lot too. We try not to keep them in the house because they're not like good for you. Did you just get the family size. Family size pack of one for $17? That's not right. How many pounds of crackers is that? 12 ounces. Oh, that's insane. That's wrong. Target, two twenty nine. dollars so I could sit down and eat an entire box of that in one sitting by myself. You can eat a lot of things in one sitting by yourself. You're a big boy. Yeah, but... I have confidence in you. I, I'm just trying to say that they're good, but you're right. I just... <laughs> I don't have any self-control. Uh, my number one has been my number one cracker my entire life. I legitimately ate three quarters of a box of them yesterday. Uncle. Uncle, Uncle Cracker. <laughs> I really wanted <laughs> to come out here and be like, my number one cracker, M&M. <laughs> and see if anyone got it. I was talking to Charlie, actually, the other day. He goes, wait, you're doing top six crackers? He goes, that's people, right? I'm like, no, but that'd be funny. We're a family show. We can't get too crazy bob saget once hosts a family show yeah but his stand-up is really raunchy yep kind of weird ritz bits <laughs> ritz bits yes man what a cracker that is my i do i could just crush them i love ritz what do you do after you crush them you put them in things no, like I, I put it in my mouth and i crush them <laughs> i just like handful just <laughs> Like a you know what a funny movie is? Heavyweights. That is a fun movie. Maybe we should um, record Re- ourselves watching it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Because <laughs> that one's over so I'll just, well. I'll just say all the say all the lines in the movie right before they're said. <laughs> and then Jameson will come and unplug it with ten minutes left. Uh. <laughs> right as they're finishing the last hole. Right as they're finishing the last hole. Oh, Oops. gosh. Is what she it is. Was a, no. Question of the podcast. Do you like to camp? 75% of people said, yep. 25% of people said, nope. Do you like to camp? I love to camp, but it's been a while since I camped. You got to camp more. I know. I know. I know. I know. Buy that camper. I Well, I need to buy that. I know. We, we've had, we've had this conversation so, yeah, earlier Literally this earlier episode. tonight. Yeah. 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 Subscribe, rate, listen everywhere. If you listen to podcasts, give us a review. We'll read on there. Or just email dads and diaper duty gmail.com. Facebook, Instagram, dads at diaper duty. We'll be back next week. You're going to Skype in, right? I'm going to Skype in next Money. week. I will be down in Detroit because I am leaving early Tuesday morning to go to Tampa, Florida. And then we will be taking Labor Day off and we will be back just in time for football. So, uh, why did the chicken coop only have two doors? To go 
in with humans and out with chickens? Because if it had four, it'd be a chicken sedan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Matt Hensler. <laughs> Pete Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame. Hey! <laughs> <laughs>